Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're finishing up the install of the Arduino Multi-Block Signal System. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. So today we're finishing up the install of the multi-block signal system. If you've been following along, we have designed the Arduino system, we have put in the basics of the wiring, and today we're going to get the signals up and running and we're going to do some test trains that run around it. We're also going to do some modifications to the code that I ran into as I was installing the signal system itself and testing it out and we're going to improve that code as well if you want to watch the part one and part two of this i'll put a link right up here as well as in the description below let's get started the first thing we're going to do is drill the holes in the layout base that are necessary for the signals and sensors Now before we begin, we want to hook power to the Arduino. We're going to be using this DC to ground and positive wire adapter so we can hook up a DC wall wart to the Arduino itself through the ground and VIN pins. Next, we're going to take our wires that we pre-ran underneath the layout for the signal lights and pop them out the layout at the appropriate spot. I'm going to be using these signals that I found on Amazon. I will have different scales linked in the description below. We solder the wires to the corresponding colors on the signal. We then use some heat shrink tubing to secure everything in place. and then we put the signal into the spot. We repeat the process of the signal on the other end of the block as well. Next, we need to install the sensors, which I'm installing along the side of the track. For this reason, I'm going to slowly bend the LED infrared emitter and receiver into a 90 degree position from where they are now. The first thing we're going to do is connect these female DuPont connectors to the three pins on the wire for the power, the ground, and the sensor output. We're then going to use some electrical tape to secure them in place. After that, we're going to strip off the connectors from the other end of the DuPont wires. We then use the same wire that we were using for the system before, and we just cut off one of the wires that is inside of it and we solder all the connections in place. And then we use some heat shrink tubing to secure everything. We then repeat the process for all of the sensors. Now we need to position the infrared sensors in a way that the sensors are going to be tripped properly. And this requires a good amount of testing. Once we've completed testing, we can use a little bit of silicone caulk to secure the sensors in place. We now have everything installed, but we need to tweak the program a little bit to make it run more efficiently. So let's head over to the Arduino IDE. Okay, everyone. So we have a few changes that we need to make to the Arduino multi-block signal system, and they're really quite simple. They're basically ways that are going to assure that we don't have any missignaled sections. So what I was running into for the first time was that the signal would re-trip since the two sensors are so close. And I came up with a solution that's very similar to the way that I saw the original block signal system with this problem to make it more accurate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce where the program counts to five, and if the signal has been clear for five seconds, then it'll throw it to green. So that's what we're gonna do. And the first thing we need to do is declare a new integer so we're going to go ahead and right up here in our declarations at the very top, we're going to do INT and we're going to call it clear count. And we just need to leave that just like it is. All right, so now we're going to scroll down into the setup and you can leave all the pin modes the same. One other thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new signal state. Now I'm going to do ST underscore YY 
one. I'm going to have this one be a double yellow so it throws yellow on both signals. So that's all we need to do there. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up another signal state down here. So we did STYY1 right there. So what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to copy STYY and we're going to come down to the end of the break, do a new line right there, and we're just going to adjust the title right there and do STYY1. So that's all you need to add right there for the switch states. And then we just need to go down and we need to set up the a few more things here in the actual different states. The first thing we need to do is we actually need to go into the green green and we need to re have this be the reset for the clear count. So what we're gonna do is after our delay, which you can adjust that delay, I actually ended up adjusting this delay to 200 milliseconds, but we're going to do clear count equals zero and this means whenever the system goes to signal green green it's going to set the clear count to zero which is going to be our five second count and that's pretty much everything we need to do right there we're not going to touch the clear count until we are exiting the block so we need to scroll all the way down to rr3 so what we need to do is put another signal state after this one and since it is very similar to signal yy I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to signal YY and I am just going to copy it. And then we're going to put it down here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all the if then statements. And that way we are we are set up for all of the lights to be correct and then we just need to change the delay to 1000. So now we do our new if then statements. The first one's going to be if value A1 is greater than 500 and value A2 is greater than 500 and clear count is less than five. And all we need to write here is clear count plus plus. And all that's doing right there is it's saying that if the sensors are clear and the clear count is less than five, then you're just gonna, this little plus plus means it's going to add one to the clear count. So what we're doing here is every second, it's going to run through this and then it's gonna go through here. And if it is less than 500 and both the signals are clear, it's gonna add one and then it's gonna add another and then it's gonna add another and it's gonna add another until it reaches five. And then it's going to go on to the next one, which we'll be typing up shortly. Now we need to do else if value A1 is greater than 500 and value A2 is greater than 500 and clear count is a greater than 4 which means it would be 5 going to do our bracket and we're going to do signal state equals st underscore gg which means it's going to go back to green and the whole system is going to restart okay so we have the way the signal is going to count to five if it's clear and the signal state is going to switch to green. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to put a reset in there so if there is a false clear signal thrown it, it, it will catch it. So what we need to do is we need to type else if value A1 is less than 500 and then we do two vertical bars which stands for OR and that is your backslash button with the shift key just so you guys know just above the enter key on your keyboard. 
And then we're gonna do value A2 is less than 500. We're gonna do and clear count is less than five. We're gonna do clear count equals zero. And that will reset everything back to zero. So if you get a false clear and then all of a sudden it checks again within those five seconds, then it's gonna reset it back to zero and it's gonna start counting again. So let's go through that finally. The one last thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the signal YY set to signal YY1 because that's very important. So make sure you put that one after the signal YY1. So let's see here, we have both of the yellow signals turned on and everything set off and we are still showing the next block occupied or it's it will not transmit next block occupied right there um, let's go ahead and change that as well just to be on the safe side and we'll just say that this will transmit so you'll still be showing the block is occupied as the train is exiting so what this is going to do is this is going to set up signal YY1 with yellow one, yellow two on. And if the clear count comes up to five through this process right here, it's gonna to go to signal green, green, and then restart the whole process. If there is a false clear, then it is going to, while it's less than five, it's gonna reset that count back to zero. Now, the one last thing we need to do is we actually need to go up to signal RR3 and we need to switch the signal state that's going to go to. So it's going to go to signal state YY1. So let's go ahead and check everything here really quick. And it looks like we're all good to go here. Let's verify the program. And there we go, you can load this in. It's gonna work exactly the same way. We're gonna run this on the layout itself. So let's go see how it works. Now we've begun testing our new sensor setup. The signal here that's facing you is the one that the train is exiting the block out of. Now, when all the train completely passes by, it should flip to yellow. And there it goes. Now over here, we can see that the signal flips to green. And when the train passes by, it should flip back over to red and the previous signal should flip over to yellow. And we can see also here that the signal flips from yellow to green, indicating the next block is clear as well. And when the train passes through and enters, the signal goes red. So that's the entire Arduino-based multi-block signal system. You can see it works great on this loop, and it will also work great on point-to-points. Um, still working on a lot of different tweaks, but overall, I'm very, very happy with it. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope this helps you if you want to install the system on your own layout. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like Arduino videos like this video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading!